Happy Sabbath once again. Okay, yes. And as we said, we're going to touch on some old points because the Lord does not, um, does not show the new without the old. The, the new is just an unfolding of the old. So therefore, the old is the thing in which we have to understand. So we'll look at the 2,300 day prophecy because um, there, there's a rule. Paul says it. First comes that which is what? And then afterward, that which is what? Okay. So the 2,300 days has been naturally fulfilled, correct? Okay. And we are not to set time anymore. Again, right? Okay. So now that, that prophecy must have a spiritual fulfillment to it because the natural has already passed. So now that natural history would be a um, tool or a help for us to understand the spiritual import of, of what Christ wants us to see in it. Amen? Okay. So now let's look. We we'll look at these things in light of, of, of the gospel as well. Okay, so we're we'll gonna start in Matthew chapter one, verse twenty-one. Let's start let's start at the top of the notes. It's, all right, are everyone there? It says, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name what? Jesus. Amen. Yes, that's true too. It says, for he shall what? Save his people from their sins. Okay, so. Jesus means that, means ju just that, to save, save um, from, um, from our sins. His work is to save us from our sins. And this work is clearly shown in the sanctuary above, amen? Because that is, that is what, what the lamb, the goat, the meal offering, the drink, what was all for, is to, is to, is to cleanse. Um, it, it, it was a type to show the cleansing from your sin. So Jesus, his, his work is to save us from our sins, as we all know, certain things, um, grand and new. So now let's go to the next verse, next verses, because um, this is where we see the work, the, the work of Christ in freeing us or saving us from our sins, not in our sins. So Daniel 8, 13 says, Then I heard one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be the what? Vision, Vision concerning the daily and the tr transgression of, amen, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden on the foot. <clears throat> and he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Okay. So now I'm going to ask, ask a series, series of questions. So when does the two thousand three hundred days begin? 457 B.C. Amen. Amen. I'm happy. Answered very promptly. 457 B.C. It's the beginning of the 2300 days. Now let's go to Daniel 9, verse 24. Because all of this is about, I'll just put, this is about the gospel age. Now what does this word gospel mean? Uh, message. message. Yes, that's true. What else? Good news. Good news. Glad, glad tidings. Amen. So what is so so the good news is that you can be freed from your sins. So and um and and the sanctuary shows you the work of Christ freeing you or blotting out your sins. So so this message here is all about the glad news or the gospel. All right? So these this um this time here is showing us the gospel gospel age. So now Daniel 9 verse 24 it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the what? Amen. This is to free from sin, transgression, and to make an end of sins and to make what? Re reconciliation for, for iniquity and, and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So how long is the 70 weeks? 490. Okay, so I'll put I'll put it here because I'm gonna need more space. Alright. So this time right here we're gonna put as the this is the 490. Okay. Um I may need more space. Let's just I'll put this is the end of the 490 here. Down here. Okay, good. Yeah, that works. Okay. So, um, so now, 
Let's go down to verse 25. It says, Know therefore and what? Understand. Understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and and to build and to build Jerusalem onto, Messiah, onto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score and two weeks. The the street the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So it says that 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 excuse me that yeah amen so when was that again they already said it 457 bc and this is the third decree from artaxerxes to restore and to build jerusalem and then the bible breaks up these um these weeks so now the 70 weeks is broken up into these these parts it says seven weeks right mm -hmm. then it says 62 weeks and then um the, the last verse we here we have here from from daniel 9 it, it have this one week so it's broken up into these three parts mm -hmm. so i'm gonna just put this is the 2300 and the 2300 is broke up into two parts which is the 490 and 1810 but the 490 itself is broken up into three parts, okay? So you have, first you have the seven. Actually, I could move, I could move it over a little bit. Yes, yeah, so you have the seven weeks, then you have the 62, then you have the one week, okay? Amen, yes. All right, so the seven weeks, and how many days are in a year? I mean, sorry. No, that's not, that's not, that's the wrong question. How many days are in a week? That's what I was asked. Seven. So seven times seven is what? 49. So a year for a day, this is 49 years. All right. So now when we take 49 years, let's put it small here. 49 years from four 57 BC, it brings us to, you know, I have to do the math right now. Go to 408 BC. So when you go to 408 BC, this is now, um, we didn't read the, yes, yes, we did read it. It says, the street shall be built, built again, and the wall even in troublous times. Okay? Now this, this, this brings to view the work of Ezra and, um, Nehemiah. amen, yes, in Ezra chapter 4 and Nehemiah 2 onward to like 8 or 9, something of that sort. Okay, but we'll read that as we go along. Let's go down to read verse 26 and 27. It says, it says, and, and, I, and, I, amen, Th three score and two, two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not, but not for himself. Jump down to verse 27. And he shall what? For, with many for one week. So this is where we get this last week. And as Michelle rightfully said, is this one week is also then broken up. Yeah. Ah, that's the wrong. It's broken up into how much, Michelle? Three and a half. Amen. Three and a half. Three and a half. So I want y'all to see how specific God is with this, with this whole time. He breaks it up into many pieces. So that everyone will know directly that this, that this is Christ. He broke it up in numerous times to show that this is his work and no man had done this work but him. So he, 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 takes, he takes the whole thing and he, and he breaks it into two. This is the 490. As we know, 490 and 34 AD. But then with the 490, he breaks it up into these three parts, 762 and then one. But then in the one, he breaks it up into two, the three and a half and three and a half. All right. So the Lord is trying to, he's making it very pointed that every man knows that this is him and this is his work. Amen. Okay. So I was going to read the quote from William Miller um, underneath Daniel 9. The first one. Can someone read, read it, please? <clears throat> And it is very evident that these two were governors over Jerusalem 49 years. 
and it makes the seven weeks of years and carries us down to a time to the year 408 BC. Amen. So these four four years, I mean 49 years, which brings it down to the to the um the, the work of the streets and and the walls. Well, um, Okay, yes. Can someone read, read the next one? Actually, um, we can jump. We can jump over CIS. Go, go, go to DOF two ninety one paragraph four. So read that, please. Amen. So, uh, this is the year of the, the rebuilding or the reconstruction. Amen. Yes. Same thing that came to my mind as well. This is the reconstruction era. All right? Of Jerusalem. Okay. And then the Lord breaks it up into the, the 62 and then the one after. Um, let me fill these in. 27. A.D., then 31 A.D. And then, as you know, October, Amen, Sashel, 1844. Okay. And, and the more important is that it was a time of reconstruction. Amen, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah. For the finance and department, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so this is how we follow the Lamb. All right? We have, we follow... We follow um, the, the works, the works of God, the work, the work of God in, in um, the earth. So, um, let's look at these these next verses. Just, just the bold. It says, "These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever He goeth." So this is showing where where Christ is going as well. And Christ, do I have it in here? Yeah, I'll just read it. All right, Matthew sixteen twenty four. The bold. It says, "If what." If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross, take up his cross and follow me. All right. Next. Next verse. Hebrews 6, 19. It says, which what? Hope. And hope is also faith. It says, which faith or which hope we have, we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. And, and which, um, amen, into that within the what? Which veil is he um, speaking of here? In the sanctuary. Amen. So this veil in which he's speaking of is in the sanctuary. So now, when we, um, actually, next verse, it says, Whether the forerunner is, is for us what? Entered. Amen. Maiden high priest forever after the order of Mel. Chizedek, um, deck, amen. So, so this this prophecy gives us the movement of Christ in in the sanctuary. So we, I'll use the 1850 chart. We know that first you have the the court, then you have the holy, then the most holy, amen. And this is how we follow Christ. We have to follow His works in the sanctuary from from the first first point all the way to the last point, okay. And it says, our faith should be within the veil. That's what Paul tells us. So, so our faith must be, must be sure upon the work of God in the sanctuary. We have to know God's work in the sanctuary. And this is what the gospel is about. Because, because Jesus' name is Jesus to save us from our sins. And, and the time when we're saved from our sins is when, when our sins are blotted out from the sanctuary, from, from the books, books of record in the sanctuary. Amen? Okay, so we have to understand what the 2,300 days um, teaches. And this is how we, when we find the Messiah, we must follow the Messiah, okay? 
because some, some will find, but they shall not walk therein. And we'll read Jeremiah 6.16, because this is exactly what it says. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the what? O pass, where is the what? Good way. And there's none good but who? But God. So, so, so the old paths is whose ways then? God's ways. Okay, there's none good but God. So it says, where is, where is the good way? And these are God's ways. And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. So when we look back at Millarite history, they, they searched the old paths, and they saw these things, and then they found rest onto their souls. Because on October, um, t- 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 amen, they, 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 um, they then received light upon what? The rest. What is the rest? Amen. The Sabbath. So they saw the old paths, as is on this chart here. They saw the old paths, and it led them to receive rest for their souls. Amen? So if it happened for them, if we do the same, it will happen for us. But continue on. Um, yeah, but they said we will not walk therein. Psalm 77, verse 13. It says, Thy way, O God, is in the what? In the sanctuary. I just stop there. So God's way is in the sanctuary. And the Lord says to walk in his ways. So we must understand the work of God in the heavenly sanctuary. And, and the one that was on earth is just a type telling us of God's work in which he will do in the sanctuary. So we have to understand the types because this is where our faith is anchored. Our faith is anchored in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ first came in the court. It's when he died upon the cross. And then, yeah, I'll just, I'll put it in short here. This is showing the court work. And then the court work ended at this point, at the cross. And then Christ moved from the court to where? The holy. The holy. All right. Then Christ moved to the holy place, and then, then after that, he moved from the holy, holy to the what? Most holy. And this is where he is even now. Amen. Okay. So this one prophecy shows us the movements of Christ. All right. So we have to understand this so we can follow the Lamb, because Christ literally he got up from earth and he rose and he ascended to heaven. And their faith, as Paul says, because, because when Paul wrote this, Christ was in the holy place. Paul was saying their faith must be upon, um, th- their faith must go in the veil. It must pierce this veil. It should be in heaven. So likewise, the same when Christ is in the most holy place. Our faith should be piercing this veil. Our faith should be, should be anchored in the work of Christ in the, in the most holy place. Amen? Amen? Go ahead, Michelle. And then Emily. Yes. Yeah. So is yes, and then is when Christ ascended at his ascension. After he stayed on earth for um, forty days, he taught. He taught for forty days, and then he yeah, and then he went went to heaven. And ten days after. Um, the Holy Spirit came down upon upon the upon the disciples. This was all in the same year of 31 A.D. Uh, 31 A.D. So all the things prior to this is showing the courtyard work. Oh, prior. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All, all the things prior to it. Yeah, yeah. The cross. The cross is the court because this was the the burnt burnt offering. That's the first thing you meet um, in 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 the sanctuary in the. Mm-hmm. So when Christ died, died on the cross, all, all the things from, let's put the fall of man, from the fall of man to the cross, to the cross which was teaching you the court. Yeah. Amen. All right. But, but then, then again, you can also say it's also teach you of all, all, all the other phases as well, because Moses got the pattern that was in, in heaven. So he, he saw some of those things as well. But, but, but just, just for this one point, from the fall of man to the cross is showing this, this courtyard work, all right? From when Christ ascended up into the, the holy place. 
Yeah, from the ascension down to October 22nd, 1844. Yes. Okay. So it says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. So wherever Christ moves, we must move with him as well. Amen? And then if we don't, we shall be left in total darkness, which is what happened on October 22nd, 1844, with those who did not follow Christ into most holy. But there's also some that moved with Christ into most holy, but then they stood up and left and went back. And then and then they received the unholy influence from Satan. So, so even though you see the way, you have to stay in that way as well. Because some they see the way and they step on it, but then they step off and they go back in their false way. So we have to stay in it. You had a hand, correct? When you said earlier you had to follow Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Our, amen. This is what Paul is saying in Hebrews 6. Our affections, our faith um, should be in the sanctuary above from un, in the work, work of Christ in the sanctuary. Okay. So now this lesson is taught in Numbers 9, verse 17. Let's so read um, verse 17, 18, please. Okay, so anytime, anytime they had to move the cloud, they, they must follow the cloud. They must follow this sign. So anytime Christ moves, he, he moves with the clouds as well. So this is what we look at. And the cloud for us, I'm going to say for this time is Daniel 8, 14. This, this is what shows us when Christ is moving. We have to understand these points. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go on to under the heading heaven to court because when Christ came came from heaven to earth the clouds move, moved with him when Christ moves 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 from the court to holy the clouds are there from the holy most holy the clouds are there when Christ comes out out from the most holy place the clouds are there so we we have to understand all these points all the, the movements of the cloud okay because it says that when when the cloud moves the children of Israel move when the cloud abode the, the children of Israel abode there, all right? So, and as we are, are in now, the cloud is aboding in the most holy place. Christ is in the most holy place, and this is where we must stay because this is where Christ is stayed. We, we are to follow him. We're not to run ahead. We're not, we're not to lag yet, trail, trail back. We have to follow, be right step in step with Christ. Go ahead, Emily. Amen, yes, and he comes with the clouds, the ten thousands of his saints. So every time he moves, there's a cloud there. So we, so therefore, in my mind, this is telling me we have to understand that we have to follow him, because this is how 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 they they moved in the past. So this is how Christ is going to show show how he moves in the future, because because the Lord does not change. Because if he changes, we would be what consumed. consumed. Okay. So now, so the rest of these notes, these are very plain, straightforward things we all should know. But I'm just doing this to set stage for uh, other things that shall come as well. Um, let's go to Luke 2, verse 8 to, let's just, okay, yes, 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 that's nice. Let's go to 8 to 12, 8 to 13, yes. Yeah, just, yeah, let's go to 8 to 13 first. Can I read it for those verses, please? And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. Glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were full afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Okay, so they were bringing the what on um, um, the, the gospel. Amen. Yes, good tidings mean gospel. Uh, gospel means good tidings. So, so they're coming to bring the gospel, and and we we know this thing here, this scene here, so it's showing the moving of Christ. So, so the gospel is based upon the moving of Christ as well, okay? All right, go ahead. <clears throat> this, shall be to, this shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Amen. Okay. So, the angels are, are the clouds, correct? Or the clouds are the angels. Amen. All right. So, so the way... The way we know that this, this cloud is moving is by the fulfillment of events. And the reason why I'm saying that is because of verse 12. Because the angel says, and this shall be a sign unto you. So, 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 so he's saying here that one, when you see this, you know that this, this is a, um, a, a, a fulfillment of, um, of, of the um, movements of, of Christ, okay? Because it says, it says, ye shall find, fi find, find the, um, ye shall find the babe wrapped in, in s s swaddling clothes. So when, when the fulfillment, uh, how do I have his birth up here? When this is um, done, this is where you see the cloud. So, so anytime an event is fulfilled, this is where you're going to see the clouds being marked at each point. But anyways, go down to verse, someone read, can someone read verse 15 to 17, please? Amen. So they found the what? The Amen. That's true. That's true. They found the what? They found the Messiah. They found they they found Jesus. But yeah, at this point he was not anointed as yet. But we all know that he will. He is the anointed one. But so so they ended up finding finding Jesus, finding the babe lying in the manger. And the cloud is the thing that helped them to find where Christ would be. So if you follow the clouds, you shall find where, where Christ shall be. Okay? Jump down to this, this another one, Matthew chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. Amen, yes. Where is it? Yes, that's true. It's not a literal cro um, cloud. Don't I? Yeah, I have the verse in here. Actually, I'll, I'll let's go down to Hebrews 12. Let's go to, it's in the notes, but let's jump. Let's, let's go in your, in your Bible to Hebrews 12, verse 1. I'll go over what the cloud is. I should have put this up a little bit higher. Go ahead. Hebrews 12, verse 1. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead if you want. That's it. So the cloud is what? Witnesses. Proofs, Bible proofs. So, go ahead. Yeah, so, you know, by faith, you must <coughs> know that we do have this cloud because who was the one that was given Daniel understanding? Gabriel. Gabriel. And Gabriel. He says, I'll show you from the scripture of truth. Exactly. Yeah. He'll, he'll, give you, he'll give you this understanding from the scriptures, which is a cloud of witnesses. And angels is also a symbol of a cloud. So mm -hmm. we are being guided by, you know, by a cloud. Yeah, by the clouds. Amen. We must have faith, know that uh, the cloud is there, is, is there guiding us and leading us by the cloud. Amen. So, so th this is why I, I brought up the point in verse uh, 12. It says, and this shall be a sign unto you. All right. So, so God's word is a sign unto us that these things are being fulfilled. All right. Because, because. Because it's following, the, um, it's following on on the things that that was said, and 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 um, this this prophecy, the 2300 days, shows us that all these things are true because it it was following directly after, after the things in which the Lord said. Go ahead, Michelle.
Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And I didn't read this part in Daniel 9, but they should have known, known that because in Daniel 9, verse 26 and 27, it speaks about the destroying of the city and the sanctuary. It's 26. Yeah, it says, and shall, yes. <clears throat> yeah, it's the second. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, go back one, and it's there, of the prince. Amen. Are determined. Amen. So, this was the destruction of, um, yeah, this, this prophecy also gives us the destruction of Jerusalem, of the city of and the sanctuary, because the sanctuary was l literally destroyed, and the city was literally destroyed. And they should have all seen that based upon just these, what, four, four verses here. These four verses gives us the, everything that was to happen. And this is why I'm saying the 2,300 days is very important, because it gives you, it is specific, it's very pointed. So if we understand this correctly, the Lord, the Lord shall pour out new light upon the, these very things. And this is where now then the Lord will be very specific with us and show us the, the specific events that shall happen in our time. And this is something I want for us all to have, to know exactly the specific events that shall come to pass so that we might prepare ourselves for each and every one of them. And the Jews should have done that because, because they had all these things. They had these things for, for centuries, but they just missed it. So we, we cannot be as a natural Jew, but we should be as a spiritual Jew and see these things, all right, see these things spiritually and see what it's pointed to so that we can prepare ourselves, send our sins beforehand so that when, when these points are, are fulfilled, we are not lost. Okay, you had none of the point? <clears throat> Of, of the riots? Mm -hmm. that was, yeah, yeah, that was the first one. But this one is talking about when it's fully done now, now by Rome under um, Cessus and Titus. So, question I have is, is that just going to the Indian? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we are. Since this point. Amen, yeah. So, just as you said, if we don't get it as well, just as them, it will be the, the, the same, their lot will be ours. And actually, ours would be worse because we have all of their light and our light as well on top of it. So, we we shall receive um, much more strikes for it. <clears throat> okay, so going back down to Matthew chapter 2, verse 9, 10, 11. Just looking at the cloud that was there when Christ moved from heaven to earth, when he moved from heaven to do the, the work of the court. All right. Matthew chapter 2, verse 9. It says, when they had heard, heard, heard the king, they... They um, de departed, and lo, and lo, the star, the star which they saw in the east went before them. T -t -t um, t came and stood. Over Amen. Over where the young child was. So the cl so the star or the cloud, which is the same 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 thing, the angels came over Christ and stood exactly where Christ was so that they might know exactly where Christ um, was at that time. So if they follow the star, they would find Christ. All right? So the same thing with us. If we follow, follow the clouds, um, we, we shall find Christ. 
and the cloud is the clouds of witnesses. If we follow the clouds of witnesses, it shall bring us directly to Christ, to Jesus, so that, so that so he can save us from our sins. All right, now verse 10, this is, this is what we shall do or, or will be doing and should be doing now as well. It says, when they saw the what? The star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. So they rejoiced when they saw Christ or the star? They, they rejoice under the witnesses, under the star. Amen. So we have to rejoice under the witnesses that Christ gives us, the cloud of witnesses, the star of witnesses. All right. Um, amen. Yeah, just that's what it was saying. If you follow, follow, if you follow the message, you shall find Christ. Amen. Uh, if you follow the messenger, you shall find Christ as well, because the message messenger is one. <clears throat> Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So it says, when they saw the star, they, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. So when they see that, this is what um, this is what caused them to go forward with great joy. Amen. John, John was a witness. Um, yeah, he was a, he was a burning lamp. So if you follow that burning lamp, you shall find Christ. And this is what Abraham did in Genesis 15 as well. He saw, he, he saw the smoke and furnace and the lamp and such. Anyways, go down to verse 11. It says, it says, and when, and when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with, with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. All right, so when you follow the star, it leads you to rejoice, and it brings you to Christ. But when you get, get to Christ, it leads you to do what? As the verse says, worship. So anytime you follow the cloud, it always leads you to a true worship. This is what happened on October 22nd, 1844. They followed, they, 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 they followed the, um, the truths in which, in, in, which, in which Christ showed them, and they rejoiced in it. But then... But then they saw Christ move, and it led them to worship on the seventh day Sabbath. Amen. It's the very same thing. All right. <clears throat> They're not following the cloud because there's no proof for Sunday. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. So our work now is to follow the witnesses and to rejoice in the witnesses that the Lord gives us. All right. So now let's go to now let's see it from the court from, from the courtyard um, to the holy place. Someone read Luke 24 for me, please, as I, I look at this text real quick. Text, um, Bible text. And he led them out as far as to, to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and <coughs> and it came to pass while he blessed them, he had, he departed from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. So the same thing you see here, this praising and this worship. When, when when they see in the cloud and they see Christ. Now let's go to Acts 1, verse 9. It says, um, just just the yeah, the bold part it says, while they um beheld, beheld he was what? Taken, Taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So so you have this, uh, let's put it here too. You um, have a cloud here. Um, when, when Christ ascends, and also, uh, put that in this. you have a cloud here when Christ, Christ ascends, and this is what takes him, takes him out of their sight. Now, as we look at the holy place to the most holy, 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. So read these two verses, please. <coughs>
Pharaoh, the Pharaoh stretched forth their two wings over the place of the ark, and the Pharaoh covered the ark, and the cities thereof were dark. Amen. So what is always there with with yeah, with the, the ark? The cherubims, the angels, and the angels of the cloud. And I need to find this quote, but but she tells us that the ark is a symbol of Christ. So 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 the ark, the ark with the with the cherubims on, on it is 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 all is it's the same as, as the last proofs we saw is Christ with the angels, Christ being moved with the angels. So this scene here, if you if you take um yeah, this this scene here has shown us how Christ is moving with um, Christ, Christ the ark is moving with the angels as well. And, and, and the ark is always in the, in the most holy place. All right. Um, okay, yeah. You would have to take in the whole story because this is when, one second. This is the thing with Solomon when he was bringing the, the, ark, in, in, the ark into the most holy place after he constructed the sanctuary. So I just took those two verses, but when you go back to the story in 1 Kings 8, this is when the ark is being brought brought in. You see from verse 1 onward to verse 11. Yes, amen, yeah. <clears throat> so now you're going to see, see the same thing as what happened on, on October 22nd, 1844. Can someone read um, EW55, paragraph 1, and just read the two bolds? I saw the Father rise from the throne, and in a flaming chariot going to the Holy of Holies, which in the bed was down. Then a, cloud, then a cloudy chariot with wheels like flaming fire, surrounded by angels, came to where Jesus was. He stepped into the chariot and was born to the holiest where the Father sat. Amen. So when Christ moves now from the holy to the most holy, there's a what? Cloud. Amen. Cloudy Amen. This is cloudy chariot, and these cloudy chariots is angels. And, and then if you follow, just, just as we said previously, if you follow the witnesses, the cloud of witnesses, it shall bring you to Christ and you shall worship. All right? Amen. Yes, Elijah was taken up um, with the cloud. You know, there, there's a, she says that we are to study the movements of, of him before he was taken up as well. Because he went to, he was in Bethel. Joppa. Yeah, Joppa and Jericho, I think. Yeah, he was in, he, he, moved, he moved around a lot. So that's something you have to folks understand. Amen. And because he is he is a faithful um faithful witness. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because when you go to um Revelation eleven, you, you have the two um oh, two faithful witnesses. Yeah. Yeah, the two witnesses, Moses and, and Elijah. But anyways, that's, not, that's another point. All right, so now so now we know that when Christ moved into the most holy place here, he went to go do the investigative judgment of the dead. So now if you see all the time when Christ moves from one, one, phase, one phase of work in the sanctuary, he moves with the clouds and such. Amen? Mm -hmm. So if he moved into the most holy place here, on this this date to do this work here, it has to be the very same for when Christ moves to investigate judgment of the dead or to investigate judgment of the living. Okay? This is this is the point that we have to understand um um all right for our time because this is dealing with us, because we we shall see these things actually happen. So we have to know when Christ moves so that when he moves, we might move with him. Because if we don't, we're left in perfect darkness. All right. OK, so this is what I was saying, that this prophecy, the 2,300 days naturally is done. And it has to bring you to a spiritual understanding of the very same thing of the 2,300 days, all right? We have to understand what, what it means spiritually, but the only way to understand is by understanding the works in here. So if you look at the works of the natural, you, can, you, sh you shall see what shall happen in the spiritual. It's something I really want to understand more. And the Lord sent in small, um, 
small beams of light upon it, but this is something I really want to understand much, much more. Michelle, I saw your hand. <clears throat> Amen, yes. Amen, yes. Amen. 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 But the 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 nice part about it is that there is no time. And that means we can hasten his coming. If we fulfill the things in which in which God's word says, we can hasten it. Daniel couldn't hasten it. It was 70 years. It was locked. It was locked to 70 years. But 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 with us, if we hasten it, he can he can be here in 20, 30 um X amount of years. So if the, the point is, if we follow on to know Christ, we can hasten his coming. So that is a good thing of, of no time. And, 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 and she says the third should, will, is, not, is not hung on time. It is stronger than time. But now let's go on to the next heading. So we're going to look at the, from, from the dead onto the, the living, the, the judgment of the dead onto the living. We already read this in Hebrews 12, verse 1, showing the clouds as witnesses. Now let's go to EV 221.2. Someone read the bold portion, please. <clears throat> Wait, hold on. Yeah, it starts off the foundation of our faith. It's one, one sentence. The correct understanding of the ministration in the heavenly sanctuary is the foundation of our faith. Amen. So, so for us to build a house, you must need a what? Foundation. foundation. And if you don't have a firm foundation, the house shall fall. And the church is built on a firm foundation, and this foundation is Christ, and all the things in which Christ has taught. So, but but in, in this here, she's saying that the correct understanding of the ministration, the heavenly sanctuary, it, this is our foundation. So, so, so to have a house built, built on the rock, we must have a correct understanding of the ministration of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. All right. And the 2,300 days helps us to have a correct understanding of the ministration of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. Okay. So now, <clears throat> next paragraph. Can someone read this? Read the whole thing, please. Okay, so the subject of the sanctuary and the what, she says? Judgment. Investigative judgment. It helps us to understand um, our work in that time. It says, it says, hold on. Amen. The position and work of both Christ and and us. So if we do not understand um, the work work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary, we, we shall end up doing the wrong work. This is why it is so important. All right. We shall go forth and bring strange fire in, in the um, sanctuary. Amen. And um, die thereafter because of it. All right. So we have to understand the, the, um, the work Work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. Um, finish the quote, please, Sante.
I'm not, let me see if I have this quote in here. Um, may not, but anyways, okay. So we all shall be brought to court. Every single one of us shall be brought to court. And I'm not talking about the courts of earth, because I'm talking about the court of heaven. Um, Kunar sent a, a quote this week. It says, it says, this week is court week with us. We will all be brought to court and God will question us. And we have to be able to answer these questions. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying the course of this earth, the course of heaven. That is a harder court to get past. But however, it is also easy because the Lord has given um, all the right things for us to say when our names are called in court. Amen. So, so we have to know when the judgment moves from the dead to the living. We have to know that. It is not an if, ands, or buts. It's not a maybe. We have to know when that when that time comes and 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 excuse me, end our work for that time because when it comes immediately, we have to do a, a work because because when Christ moved moved from the court to the holy place, the the um, disciples they knew their work and they went and did their work right after. They went and and as it says, I believe he was reading in Luke. They went forward and they praised God and were and they were continually in the temple. They were teaching. OK, so so they knew then the Millerites knew we have to know. Amen. Go ahead, Alyssa. Oh, OK. All right. So everybody must stand in their lot and and we, we must be able to answer the questions in which God um Ask us. Next paragraph, EV 222.1. Um, can someone read this as well, please? All who have received the light. All who have received the light upon these subjects are to bear testimony of the great truth which God has committed to them. The sanctuary in heaven is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of men. It concerns every soul living upon the earth. It opens to the view the plan, the plan of redemption, bringing us down to the very close of time and revealing the triumph triumphant issue. issue of the contest between righteousness and sin. It is of the utmost importance that all should thoroughly investigate these subjects and be able to give an answer to every one that asketh them a reason of the hope that is in them. Amen. Okay, so says the saint train, heaven is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of man. This is what the gospel age is about. This is what the gospel is for. All right. And and center means it's the center is, is it means excuse me. Amen. To a point. So it's all it's all towards one point. So 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 all things point to this work in the sanctuary. Okay, and this is where our faith must be anchored in the heavenly sanctuary and the work of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. All right. All right. Jump down to. Okay. yes, go down to the next quote, GC 427, paragraph one. It says the what? The proclamation. Behold, behold the. um, Bridegroom cometh in the summer of 1844 led thousands to what? Expect, Expect the immediate at, in advent of the Lord. Okay, so this is this is where we are now. We're coming. We're coming to the height of the midnight cry very soon, and the work, the work back then of, of this message was to was was to make all expect the immediate immediate advent of the Lord. So ours must be the very same thing, the immediate advent of the Lord. But, but when Christ moved back then, where did he move to? Yes. The most holy place. To do what work? We already said this already. The judgment of the dead. So the midnight cry message was showing the immediate advent of, of God to the most holy place to do 
do the work of the amen the okay. judgment so our message in this time is the very same thing it is it is to show the immediate advent of Christ to the work of the investigative judgment of the living okay and then after that okay um so I have it yes the midnight cry was she says the midnight cry was to um me read it says to it says led thousands to expect the immediate advent of the Lord but Christ had not come to the earth but he came came as Daniel 7 says to the ancient of days okay Daniel yeah Daniel 7 yes yeah Daniel 7. So he came to the Ancient of Days to do the work of the in, investigative judgment of the dead. So the midnight cry for our time is, is, is for the same thing. Amen. It is, is there to show the, the advent of the Lord or the coming of the Lord to go and do the work of the investigative judgment of the living. So, amen, yes. Um, I'll show you why. So, this is how, um, this is August 15th, 1844, October 22nd, 1844. So, this midnight cry led them to expect the immediate, ad, immediate advent of the Lord. And this, and October 22nd is the advent of the Lord. And I have what advent means. It means the coming of the Lord. So, our time as well. Is the very same thing. The midnight cry in our line is to bring us to the immediate advent of the Lord. But for them, is the investigative judgment of the dead. This is now it's going to bring us to the investigative judgment of the living. Very same thing. Nothing different. Okay. So it is this message is to point us to the um point us to the investigative judgment of the living. It's to um, help souls to expect the Lord um, at that time. Really? Three minutes already? Dang. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. And the, and this is our work to to know exactly what it is. And just as it was in 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 the past, it was a it was a it was a, yeah, amen, but it was a lot of things on, on one point. Likewise, it is for ours, because in the line of Christ, if you go back up another line, it was trial for entry, and then, and then they said, Moses will, will um, to tell you, they said that, um, um, it, to, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and so on, and then, and then, and then they said, we, we will, will, will tell you. So they mixed the old and the new. So likewise, in our time, it's going to be with the old and the new. It's going to be based upon all the things of the past and, and our time as well. But um, go, jump down to the last bold of that quote. And we'll, yeah, then we'll stop. Actually, might read the next one after, and then we'll stop there. Oh, man. Okay. It says, it says, but there to what? Understand. Understand his work and to follow him by faith as he goes in, 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 amen. It says, it is in this sense that, that they are said, said to go in, into the marriage. Amen. And Advent means a coming or the coming of our Savior. All right, next, next paragraph. Is, can someone read the bold of this? A coming appropriately. No, no, no. The, the quote from e Evie. It opens to view a complete system of truth, connected and harmonious, showing that God's men have directed the great Advent movement and revealing present truth as they. No. And revealing present truth. No. 
revealing. Oh, and reveals present duties. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I said I did it on purpose because we have to know the position and work. And the subject of the sanctuary shows us our position and our duty, our work. We have to know that. So this is why we have to understand the sanctuary so that so that we might know what we must do here fully and then and here fully. We have to know what, where, where we should stand and what we should do when we're standing there. Amen. We have to understand that. Amen. Yes. So that we, we don't pray in vain because. Amen. We must have an intelligent faith. We must know exactly what Christ is doing so we might follow the lamb because Christ says, follow me. So we have to know what he's doing. We have to follow him. Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More, amen. Because. Because you have proof. That's why. Because you have a cloud of witnesses. Because you know for a certainty that this is true and that your. Your faith is held on to the work of Christ here. You know for certainty that this is what it is. So, so when you know that, you shall pray, pray in a in a stronger fashion. This is why we have to understand it. But, Amen. Yes. Mhm. Mm Amen. Yes. And we have to follow the cloud, the cloud of witnesses. And this is what leads us to, to Christ. And when we follow the cloud, we must be joyous and follow in the cloud as well. Because this is what um, all the men in the past did. We must do the very same so that so that we can receive of the same. Amen. OK, so just last point, the 2300 days. This is this gospel. That we have to understand all the things pertaining to it. Let's put equals. That oh, I already have it there. Forgot. But anyways, this is this is the good um, tidings onto us. The good tidings of great joy. All right. All right. So we close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, O oh Lord, we thank you for the things in which you, you have shown, O oh Lord. Please, Father. Help us to hold hold these these things fast, to have our faith on high, Lord, and to um to see see to see see our work now, and to um and Lord to um to to have that work um, have it finished in these last days Lord please Father help us in 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 all these things, Lord, and we ask these things in your son's name. Name we Amen.